Hey, what's going on you guys? I have a new rifle here to review. This is a very rare Vulcan V15 5.56 semi-automatic rifle. Now, the only other place that I've even seen this rifle, there's maybe a couple videos on YouTube and then Ian from Forgotten Weapons, he actually has a video on YouTube as well where he pretty much says how not to build a rifle. And uh, I would agree with him on most of that. Now I will say this example that I have here, you guys, this thing shoots and functions flawlessly uh, in my experience so far. I, I waited a while after I bought it before making a video. I really wanted to tell you guys a complete range report about it. Uh, now I know I normally don't do, uh, you know, like combat rifle type rifles on my channel. And, and that's not really there's no reason for it. It's just I, I'm more of a collector. I, I like to think of myself as a collector of quality firearms. And uh, I'm not saying this isn't a quality firearm. This particular one's definitely not at the top of any list. But hey, this gun shoots just fine. It, it's. I'll just kind of skip ahead. I, I have a scope here, and I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. But at 100 yards, I was getting one-inch groups consecutively with this gun. I had no... Uh, no failures to feed, no jams. I had pretty much no malfunctions with this gun, you guys. There's one thing that it does wrong, and uh, I can show you that br briefly. The side of the, so the magazines up here, the corners, I had some metal magazines, and part of the bolt was kind of nicking at them when it would pick up a round. So I've just determined this gun likes plastic mags. And that's how I'm going to keep it. But that's that's my only real complaint, you guys. This is a fun rifle. And I will say this. It has less recoil than AR-15. To me, it, it it does. And it just feels better. It's not uh, the gas system on this gun. It's a piston driven, meaning that the gas comes up the gas block, hits a piston and drives a piston on a spring. Kitty, my cat is down here just, just scratching away. Little Kita here. Oh, whatever. I need to put you down. Okay. <laughs> so the gas actually pushes a piston that drives the bolt back. And of course, it's going to catch on empty. I check all my guns before making the video. Uh, now, I do have a few loaded mags on the, on the table. And I'm going to talk about ammo for it here in a minute. But uh, yeah, so then the gas brings the piston back and then it comes back forward because there's two springs in this carrier and then it loads around and an AR-15 just takes gas and just sends it back into the bolt and the gas itself pushes the bolt but going all the way down the gas tube while this is more of the piston style the gas pushes a, a metal piston on springs so apparently this would be a better rifle to suppress but I've never owned a suppressor and don't plan to unless they can do away with that in my opinion, silly tax stamp. I don't really feel that uh, it just shouldn't be that way. That would really protect my hearing and it would be a, a beneficial thing. I do do a lot of shooting and I, anyways, eh, the less law, the better you guys. People need, they need the Lord and they need to make good choices. And if everyone did that, we wouldn't have all these laws in the first place. Okay. So, wow, I just took the took the mag out and the bolt returned home. Huh, that's interesting. Let me notice, see something real quick. Okay, it held open that time. Interesting. Just never really. So there is some kind of lever there. And then if I pull it, yeah, then it returns. Huh, maybe I didn't pull it back all the way, who knows. But anyway, so this rifle, this is the one weak spot, you guys. And I remember when I bought this, I looked on Gun Broker. I couldn't even find one of them. You know, even Ian, he gave it the, a real mixed review. Uh, not a good review by any standard. It was more like what, how not to build a rifle. But I have to hand it to Vulcan. This is a very, you know, this is a very good idea. Uh, and the rifle shoots great. And if I had this rifle in my hands to go to war tomorrow, I would not feel underarmed in the slightest. But I would be very sensitive to, you know, if you're running as a soldier and you got in between two trees, I'm pretty sure you're going to snap this rifle. Because if I show you here, if I open up this folding stock, see that, that, that bolt right there? 
that bolt comes through this aluminum block and goes into this polymer lower. And the rifle, the lower and the upper, the way they connect, this, uh, this rear pin in, in the lower, it, it's, it's not serving a purpose. The only pin holding this gun in, the lower to the upper, is this front pin and then this aluminum block has two holes that the guide rods for the bolt spring. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the push pin here, set it on the desk. See if I can get, okay, there it is. It's got the pin through. And now the receiver opens up. Okay, so that bolt, AR-18 upper there, and if you see, it has the Eadgen stoner, the stoner style lock, locking lugs. It's very similar to AR-15, and you can actually take this lever out now because it's in, it's in line with that position, and I could show you the bolt in more detail now, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that back, just kinda, I want to show you how it holds together, not really all the details. You can you can get that on another channel. You guys, it's, it is well well made as far as half of the components. Uh, so okay, you have these two guide rod springs, and what they do? See those two little? Come on, camera. Those two little pieces there. I'm, I'm, I'm pinching those springs in. I'm holding it in right now just by the force of my, my finger there. But if you see in the, in the back of that block, see those two places. So really, you just have that front lug that my thumb is touching right there. And then those two little lugs. And they fit in like that. And then the pins back in. You guys, it feels sturdy. It doesn't feel, there's also these little side pieces you can see right here that kind of catch that aluminum lug. I will say, you guys, it feels sturdy. It doesn't feel, I mean, I can, I can really get behind this. I can put force into it. The, the gun's not breaking. It's just, in my opinion, putting that big screw into this polymer, I don't know. They could have done that better. But for what they did, you guys, I'll just tell you, I paid 660 for this gun out the door at a local gun store. They had it marked 800, and I, I, uh, <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. I kind of made the point that I had seen the video from Ian on the gun, and they uh, went from 800 to 660 out the door. So, and that was as high as I was willing to go, and uh, I think they knew that, and they. We're having issues selling it. I did replace my second trip back from the range. I went to the hardware store and put in three bolts because in Ian's video, this gas block is just pressure crimped to the barrel. It's not like securely crimped by a, like sometimes they'll, they'll mill out a section in the barrel where a, a bolt goes through to lock it. And from what I, understand this gun they did not do that it's just pressure crimp so i put in fresh hardware loctite and i crimp those three down you know i torqued the heck out of those screws i don't ever want to have issues with uh, that that moving so that's all i've done to the gun uh uh, it's been a good shooter, you guys. Somebody has these Ruger AR556 sights on it, a brand new set. That's how it how it was when i bought it. Uh I have some nail polish on there, some white nail polish. I have since sighted that in at, at 50 yards. I was getting half dollar size groups with open sights. Uh, I took this off with an Allen wrench. Has that Picatinny rail. And I have a Weaver K4. I love Weaver K4. Solid four power scope, older scope. And I have these uh, steel mounts. Uh, I think a Russian company makes these mounts. I, li I don't, I like steel. This is a steel tube. This is steel mounts, you know, 
I realize the Picatinny is aluminum, but I try to keep as many parts still that I can. That's just my way of thought. Uh, and when I take the side off, I put the scope on and at 100 yards, I was getting one inch groups with this gun. So that 19 inch barrel, 21 if you count the muzzle brake, you know, it's it's an accurate gun, you guys, and, and less recoil than an AR-15. So I get it, you know, Vulcan, uh, they might not crimp their, their barrel, uh, their gas block, it might not be you know, lock crimped properly. Uh, maybe they should have used an aluminum lower instead of polymer, but I think their company is known for making good polymer lowers. And uh, you know what? You guys, this is a range toy. It's not a go to war gun for me and it's fun and it shoots good. I will say after 30 rounds of continuous fire, this heat guard starts to heat up. And if you were to do like, if you were to dump just a couple mags with this thing, I'm pretty sure it'd be so hot you'd have to set it down. So once again, it's not a go-to-war gun. It's a it's a range toy, but it's cool. It's something different. You, you know, you get AR-18 upper, AR-15 lower, HK style looking stock. Looks like a I don't know GK-36 or something almost. It has that weird funky looking stock, and then the FNFAL barrel. I mean, it just it looks like some kind of interesting Frankenstein mutant mutant type gun. I really wish that a company like Smith & Wesson or somebody would start making something like this uh, and doing it very well. I think that would be a outstanding rifle that would sell like like mad, you know, because this AR-18 is a this this gun is not jammed on me once you guys 200 rounds through it, not a single hiccup. Uh, yeah, it, it's fun to shoot. So that's my review of the Vulcan V15. I don't know a lot about the company. Ian made that video back in 2012. I don't really know when these things were released. Like I said, I know the company has had, uh, apparently they had a 50 caliber rifle where the bolt went into some dude's chest and almost killed him. So the company is known for kind of cutting corners on quality and, and that's not good. But the one that I have here, it does shoot well. So if you see one of these things and you can get it and it's in good shape like this, and if you can get it for under for a price that you're willing to pay, in my case that was six sixty, you know, that's about what you'd pay for a cheap AR fifteen. And I still think a cheap AR fifteen, like when I say cheap, uh, I don't mean you know, like Smith & Wesson M&P series or Delton, they, they're nice rifles. They're not cheap, but they come in around $600 or $650. So you'd be better served with that gun than this for your first gun. But if you've had quite a few and if you ever come across one of these, this is this is something to definitely try to try to look into. It It's a fun gun. I'll definitely keep it for the next the next few years. It's, it's different. It's fun to shoot. So... Vulcan V15. Can't really say anything bad about it, you guys, other than the fact that I don't think it was made for, for war. There's just too many weak spots on it, but hey, the gun shoots good, and it's fun, and it definitely meets that second cool with me. It's just a, a neat rifle. Now, the second thing that I have to update you guys on, remember that 410 pistol, 45 Long Colt 410 pistol by FMJ Ducktown, Tennessee. I talked about this on my last video, and if you're just catching this for the first time today, I found this at an antique gun store. It's a, uh, you can see there's nothing in it. It's a, uh, it's chambered in 410 shotgun or 45 long Colt. And uh, I found some ammo, and this is Browning 410 number eight, half ounce shot. It only takes the two and a half inch shells, and they load in there just fine. I'm going to take that back out. Now, I actually set up a board, and at about 14 inches, I shot. And with this ammo, this half ounce, says 1,300 feet per second. Now, I know you're not getting that out of this little pistol. And I'll tell you, at it, it, it 14 inches, 14 or 18 inches, I shot it into, into a board that was just slightly angled. So if any bounce, they'd go the, away from me and not back at me. And uh, it might have penetrated a quarter inch. So 
even for a, a, a snake shot, you know, uh, the snake, you might have to reload this thing two or two or three times popping at that snake. He might, he might slither off or he might kill you or bite you. I mean, hopefully you don't, hopefully <laughs> depending on what kind of snake it is, but <laughs> I wouldn't trust this with against a snake. You guys, now I did, I did put a slug in it and it shot into a two inch pressure treated board to the point that it was bulging out the back and I could see part of the bullet. So it had, you know, 22 long rifle like penetration, uh, just with a lot larger slug, a 410 slug. So that that's adequate. That'd kill a man for sure. If it had to come to that, uh, I'm sure buckshot would too, but this bird shot, you guys, not even a quarter inch into, it was like a, it was like a one by four or something. Yeah, I just was so surprised. So, yeah, that, that's that's this this is a this is a toy, you guys, uh, an adult toy, you know, with supervision. I, why would a man own a gun like this as a toy to have fun? That's what I'm trying to say. It's not, it's definitely not a toy. This is a handgun. It it will kill for sure. But with birdshot, yeah, this is this is like uh, an adult toy right here. I don't know how this would even fit into any type of system for carry or anything. I just, it's intimidating, you know, shotgun in the hand. Uh, anyway, so that, that's, that's my update on this fun toy. Pretty neat. Yeah. Well, you guys, this is a Christian channel. Uh, I am going to do a Bible study. I'm going through the book of John and the King James. I read chapter one in the last video. I'm going to be doing chapter two today. But before I do that, I have one more thing. If you've noticed, I have this cut over my, under my eye here. Uh, this is my Remington 870. I chopped the barrel down, drilled and tapped, redid the front sight, re-blued it. It was an old pawn shop fine. I put a new butt stock on it. Just recently, I bought a synthetic stock for this. And I'm not going to mention the company. I don't think they make bad stuff. It's apparently a small family owned company, but I put on a fancy, you know, it had the little shells on the side and, uh, it, the first shot came back and, and cut me just from where the shells were and it, and the little, the way they designed this synthetic stock, it just hit me. And I just, you know, I have a future video coming on the Remington 870. And why I believe this is probably your best home defense type of gun. And the 870, this is a Wingmaster Magnum. This is kind of one that was known to be the best and was hand fitted. And, and if you can find one of these, they'll serve you for life. They're good guns, you guys. And they have that good old, they have that look. I just, from the moment I took the wood off this gun, I regretted it. And I, and then serves me right the synthetic one scratches and my face is still sore to the touch it bruised me i was shooting a 15 pellet three inch magnum so yeah i really had it coming to me anyways but <laughs> i hit the target just right uh so future review on this today let me go ahead and get to the book of john i also have this that i picked up recently it's a mossberg maverick 88 12 gauge Hold seven plus one. Yeah, my hand is sore because I was shooting those magnums in this too. And I got this scabbard, you know, shoulder holster thing for it. It's kind of neat. So future review coming on that too. Uh, shotguns really are good weapons for home defense. It's like getting hit by, you know, nine to 15, uh, 33 caliber bullets at once. It's a, it's a real, it's a serious weapon, you guys, up close. Very devastating. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move in today. Now, this is the King James. I'm going to move into this Bible study here. Starting in chapter 2, I'm just going to read the whole chapter. It's just more of a, we're going through the book of John here. My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we know, and hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. 
but whosoever but whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of god perfected hereby know we know hereby know we that we are in him he that sinneth abideth in him ought himself also to walk as he walked he that saith you guys, this is King James, I apologize. Verse 6, chapter 2. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth he that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now he that loveth his brother abideth in the light and there is no occasion of stumbling in him but he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because of your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the father. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby ye know that this is the last time. They went out from us, but that they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. I have not written unto you, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teacheth you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And ye know that he is righteous. Ye know that every one who doeth righteousness is born of him. And that's where chapter 2 ends, you guys. I know there's a lot in there. Uh, I'm really sorry I butchered verse 6 there. He that sinneth, he abideth in him. Ought, he that, see, I did it again. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. This is an interesting verse. Verse 5, just for context. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Here, hereby know we that we are in him. 
He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. When we walk as he walked, as Christ walked, there's no condemnation. We are as he was, following the will of the Father, walking in light and truth, clothed in righteousness, his garments. I'm just, this is the point that I'm making. When we are as he was. It's anyways. Sorry I butchered that, you guys. That very, very uh, critical. There's, there's so much going on here. Uh, who is the liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ is verse 22 he is an antichrist that denieth the father and the son whosoever denieth the son the same hath not the father this is critical verse 23 but he that acknowledgeth the son hath the father also these are just critical scriptures that you know we're, we're going to separate the wheat from the chaff uh, among well, I'm not going to say it, but I think you guys kind of knew what I meant. There's lots of people that believe different things out there, even in the Christian faith, denominations, etc. Yeah, you don't have the Father if you don't have the Son. If you have to acknowledge the Son to have the Father. The Jews, Jesus, remember he said, for judgment I am come. So those that say they see will be made blind, and those that do not see will see. It's through the Son we have life. And we have it everlasting and for his name's sake well that's how i'm going to end it today you guys i got future videos coming and you guys have a blessed day and you know the vulcan v15 you know what can i say good luck finding one uh it shoots great you guys there's no nothing wrong with this gun as a fun shooter no jams one moa it's cool uh like i said if you're running and you hit it in between two trees or something, I'm pretty sure it'd break in half and the guts would shoot out and your gun's completely bricked, <laughs> out of combat. And if you ever broke that, you probably could replace it yourself. You probably could, you know, take a standard AR-15 lower to a machine shop and find a way to connect this and, and do a good job. Uh, anyways, that's just my thoughts on this rifle, you guys. Cool gun. Needs needs more work, really. Little, little, you know, if it was made out of aluminum, it'd probably fix the strength problem. So I'll just say it at that. Well, you guys have a blessed day and adios.